Hello, everyone. We're going to talk about setting up uh, Spark Post to work with Joomla. I've used Mandrel from MailChimp for years to do transactional email for my Joomla sites. It was free, up to 10,000 emails a month. Worked great. But now it's a $20 a month add-on to a $10 a month MailChimp account. If you divide that by the number of emails I actually send, it's cheaper to drop them a postcard. Are there alternatives? Yes. MailChimp recommended SparkPost. I've been using them for a month or so, and I really like them. So let's walk through how to set up SparkPost with Joomla. Two major things to do here. Number one, we create a couple of DNS records that tells the internet that SparkPost is authorized to send email in our behalf. Number two, we have to configure Joomla to send its email through SparkPost. Spark Post. And you really have to do them in that order. So, on to step one. First, create a free account on sparkpost.com. You should be able to figure all this out. Then when you create the account and log in, your dashboard will look sort of like this. Okay. So first we go to accounts and sending domains. I'll go up here and click on the new domain button. I'm going to enter my domain name. OpenFaceSystems.com and we click <clears throat> Add Domain. All right. Let's see, down here, <clears throat> OpenFaceSystems.com. See the orange triangle? It is not ready to send. We need to complete at least one of the options below to verify that we actually own that domain. We'll be adding SPF and DKIM records. Well, what the heck are they? These are two anti-spam measures that the industry came up with. Uh, DKIM is the stronger of the two, but I think it's best to do both because some ISPs honor one, some the other. So uh, there, what do we do with them? Well, we're just going to have to enter them into our DNS settings. How you do this varies by which registrar you bought your domain from. Uh, I bought mine from GoDaddy, so we'll demonstrate on them. Uh, but other registrar DNS control panels should be similar. All right, in this uh, window, I have logged in to GoDaddy, and there's my DNS control panel. Uh, DNS, you see, has several types of records, A, Quad A, CNAME, MX, TXT. We're going to be working with the TXT or text records. All right. So what we're going to want to do is come up here and say Add Record. And we're going to select that we want to add a new TXT record. And it's going to ask us for two things, the host and the value. Now let's go back to Spark Post and click on our SPF record settings. And here we are. The host name openfacesystems.com and there is the value. And it has a nice little copy icon there. All right, back to GoDaddy. There, I've pasted it. And the host is OpenFaceSystems.com. On most of these, the actual name of your domain, you can abbreviate with an at sign. At just means, you know, whatever domain we happen to be working with. All right. And that's it. That was our SPF uh, record. Let's do the DKIM. DKIM record. Here it is. There is the host name. Copy that. And we're going to put in the host name there. Now, you notice this is something something dot domain key dot openface systems dot com. Depending on your um, DNS control panel, you may or may not have to put your actual domain name on there. I think with GoDaddy, it's smart enough to see that if you uh, <clears throat> 
uh, your record ends in your uh, domain not domain name that it just removes it it says oh you probably didn't want to do that some are not as smart if you copy da 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 domain key dot my domain dot com it stupider ones may put another dot my domain dot com out there so you may want to depending on your uh, DNS provider, you may want to get rid of that. It really doesn't hurt to get rid of it, I don't think. And then we got this big long thing here. What is all that? Uh, well, what that is, is some public key cryptography to sign all the outgoing email. So there it is. There's a big long nasty thing. And we can say finish and save changes. And there. Now, one of the things I like about GoDaddy is these changes, I don't know how they do it, but these changes take effect almost immediately. Uh, certain other name registrars, the DNS takes an hour or two to work through, but these things happen in just about real time. So let's go back to the SPF and hit test. And look, we got a friendly green check there, and we can test DKIM. And that's check two. Verify email, we could do that. It basically s sends email to abuse at your domain or postmaster at you dom your domain. Eh, don't need to do that. But you see now we have a green check next to our domain name that says we are ready to send. All right. Step one is done. We have configured the uh, DNS to tell the world that SparkPost is authorized to send email on our behalf. On to step two. We need to configure Joomla to use SparkPost. So you need to log into the administrator side of your Joomla site and go to System Global Configuration. And then the third tab over that says server. All right. Now for most of you, it's going to be something like PHP mail or something like that. But we're going to walk you through each of the steps you each of these settings to get it to work with spark post. Okay, so send mail. Yes. Mailer, you have your three choices PHP, send mail, or SMTP simple mail transport protocol. That's what spark post is going to want. From email should be somebody at yourdomainname.com. Remember the one we just verified with SparkPost? The one that's probably your website really needs to be that. And the name, the human readable name that's going to show up in people's uh, email clients, that's going to be the from name. Disable mass email, no, we're probably going to use that in just a second. Whoops, sorry about that. Uh, SMTP authentication, need to set it to yes. All that means is we're going to have to supply a username and password to log into Spark Mail in order for the mail to be sent. SMTP security, Spark Post uses TLS, Transport Layer Security. I teach classes in this, and it's everything I can do to resist explaining to you what each of these wonderful things is but this is a how to not a why so if you want to know the whys and wherefores contact me later i'm just doing the how right now okay so now we're left with four slots the port number the username the password and the host we're going to get these from spark post all right so we're going to go back to spark post <clears throat> and go to account SMTP relay it gives us most of it all right so first is port that's sort of the extension number that uh, we send to on spark post is 587 so go back here SMTP port 587 next ask for SMTP username all right, there's one here that says username, SMTP underscore injection. Go and copy that and paste it. Password will come back to in just a second. And then SMTP host is right here, SMTP 
dot spark postmail dot com and there it is all we're lacking is the password all right well password in the uh, spark post nomenclature is an api key so we're going to click on api keys or click on account api keys and click the orange tab up here that says new api key all right now we gotta give it a name that helps us remember i'm just going to give it my domain name openfacesystems.com and then look at all these permissions well most of these we're not going to need the only one we really need is this one right here in the middle send via smtp remember simple mail transport protocol and then allowed IPs. What IP address do we is Smart Spark Post going to allow email to come from? Well, it's going to be the IP of my site. If I don't remember that, there are a lot of ways to find it. You can find it from your hosting control panel, um, from your hosting uh, provider, or there are a number of things you can look up on the internet. Look up for something that says NS Lookup. Just search for that, and you can enter your domain name like mine and say look it up, and it will tell you the IP address 54.255.254.196. That's very, very typical. Okay, so back to Spark Post. Allow it from there. This is to make sure that nobody can steal our key and start sending out spam from some other IP address. All right. Now we add API key, and there it is. This big, long, nasty thing that you will never remember. Now it says, make sure to copy your API key now. You won't be able to see it again. That's right. As soon as you copy it and close this out, it goes away. All right? So I'm going to copy that, go back to my control panel, and paste it to where it says SMTP password, and save. All right? and then close it out and there we go and we should be done now how can we tell if it works well there's one here called send test mail click on that and it says configuration safely ah it says the email was sent successfully to branded open face systems using smtp you should check to see if you've received the test email well how's it know where to send well right there all right there's another way to test it you can go under users mass email users remember we left that enabled and we can send ourselves a little email test email from spark post uh, this is to all super users via post from OpenFaceSystems.com, and we can select the group of super users. Usually, that's just a couple, and they know what's happening. And we can click Send Email. Give it a second. Yeah, email sent to one user, me again. Okay, so what do we do? We then go to our email and check to see if we got the email. And then about a half hour later. We can go to reports and uh, message events and see if it actually sent. This is one of the things that I like better about um, uh, Mandrill is uh, their message logs, the events, tend to show up almost immediately. There's a little lag with uh, Spark Post, but oh, hey, there, it actually did work. See, so Brent at OpenFace systems.com is the recipient test mail from open face systems web design and consulting it got injected into the system and it did get delivered and i've gone to my uh, <clears throat> uh gmail and there it is. This is a test. 
mail sent using SMTP. If you receive it, then your email settings are correct. Ta-da! And now phase two is correct. We have configured Joomla to work with uh, SparkPost. The key of this is system control panel, excuse me, global configuration, server mail settings right here. So I've so showed you how to walk through the two phases of setting up SparkPost to work with Joomla. Number one, getting the DNS records in there to tell the internet that SparkPost is cool with you. Whoops, where are they? There you are, the text records. And number two, configuring Joomla to send its email through SparkPost. Hope this is a help. I've been satisfied with Spark Posts so far. This is not a paid endorsement. They don't pay me anything. In fact, I don't pay them anything. Hope you like it. Leave your comments. And hope to hear from you soon. Thanks.